Good morning and welcome to chapel. We are so glad that you're joining us as we celebrate this wonderful season of Advent where we wait with hopeful expectation for the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we always begin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. especially at this time of year, to reflect, to think about what we've done in our life. And when we really think about it, we know that we haven't done a ton of great things all the time like God would want from us. And so we take a moment to confess our sins to God, to confess those times where we've been unfaithful, where maybe we followed our own path rather than His. Let's take the next 15 seconds confess our sins to God. The great thing about Advent is that it leads us to the birth of Jesus. And this little boy grows up to be a good man, a really good man. And he grew up to love you, to show you how much he loved you in a great way by dying on the cross. 
And it's because of that cross that I can tell you now that all your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now over to Pastor Jim from St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Good morning. I'm Pastor Jim, and this is Sparky. And we've heard that you have been studying the book of Philippians and emphasizing the theme, Press On Together. There are so many great lessons from the book of Philippians, and that made me think of some of the lessons that Sparky has learned. And there are a few that I want to share with you. The initial lesson is to sit down. That seems like a lesson that every dog learns. And so Sparky, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sparky, we're filming. Everybody sees you. Sit down. All right, maybe he hasn't learned that lesson, but uh, he, he's learned the lesson to, to stay there. So Sparky, stay there. No, not come here, stay there, right? Stay there. Stay there. Sparky, you're embarrassing me. We're getting dizzy. Oh, all right, maybe the lesson, uh, roll over. So Sparky, you can, you can get down and, and roll over. Get on your belly, ready, roll. No, not get up. Roll over. Ready? Get down there and lay down and, you know, and roll over. It seems like Sparky really hasn't learned his lessons. And maybe that's our experience with Philippians. Because there are so many lessons from that book. There's the lesson to be gentle. To treat people with kindness. But that doesn't always happen. We may be mean to somebody on the playground or make fun of somebody who gets the wrong answer in class. There's the lesson to show humility, to have the same attitude of Jesus. But sometimes we brag about the things that we do and we focus more on ourselves than other people. There's even the lesson to not grumble. No matter your circumstances, even if you are going through difficult things, to believe that that God's going to work through it, and so we don't have to complain. But we complain all the time about wearing masks and being apart from our friends. It reminds me of a lesson I learned when I was your age. There were few things that I liked more than visiting my grandma's house. There's always something about being with your grandma and enjoying her cookies, but I also liked playing ball on her front steps. She had seven cement steps that led to her front porch. And I would throw a tennis ball or a racquetball against those steps and they would ricochet at all kinds of different angles and, and I'd be out there for an hour playing catch with myself. And my grandma taught me that I needed to be careful so that I wouldn't break anything. But it didn't seem like I could break anything because the steps were made of cement and, and the house was really sturdy. And as I got older, I threw the ball even harder. And there was a moment that it ricocheted in a weird direction and hit her front porch light. Glass shattered. It was all over the porch. I was terrified. So much that I ran into her backyard and down the steps to her basement and I hid there. Even when she called my name, I heard her all around the house searching for me. And she called down into the basement for me and, and made her way down the steps and, and found me hiding there. Because I was ashamed that I didn't really learn my lesson. I, I didn't hear her. I did what I wanted. I, I broke her light. I, I felt so bad. And my grandma came over to me and I said, I'm sorry, I broke the light. And, and she said that she had seen it and knew what I had done. But then she taught me something I didn't expect. She didn't get mad at me. She didn't yell at me. She didn't refuse to give me more cookies. She hugged me and told me that I was forgiven and that she still loved me. And that's the most valuable lesson from Philippians the lesson about pressing on together. Because we're not always gentle with each other, and sometimes we're arrogant and rude, 
And there are moments that we grumble and complain. But the message of Philippians throughout the whole book, and even in the last verse, is the grace of Jesus Christ be with you. And grace is one of those Bible words for love. It is an expression that God forgives us. Even when we don't learn the lessons and do the things that he has asked, he still forgives us because Jesus perfectly knew what he was supposed to do. Jesus followed every lesson all the way to the cross and he hung up there and died for our sins and paid for them so that no matter what we do, no matter how much we mess up, we are always forgiven. We can press on through anything because Jesus who died rose again and he is gonna love us and guide us through it. That's a great reminder, a great lesson for your theme and from that book. Have a great week, everyone. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now go with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Now let's close with a song. Let's close our chapel today with a song that is from Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, which says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Who's the him? Who is the him? That's right, it's Jesus, because Jesus gives me strength. I'm going to sing the last couple of lines of the verse and the chorus, but on the first parts of the verses, you have an echo and you don't have to sing, you can speak the words. I'll speak the words, you speak them back, then I'll sing, and then you'll do more speaking. You'll get it, it's easy. If I have a little, if I have a little, or if I have a lot, or if I have a lot, I can be happy with whatever I got. Now it's me. I can face all kinds of things With the power my Jesus brings I, 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 I can do all things Cause Jesus gives me strength No matter what life brings I can do all things I, 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 I can do all things Cause Jesus gives me strength this part now. Speak it. Whenever I'm in trouble and I can see no end, God can see my trouble and he wants to be my friend. I can face all kinds of things with the power my Jesus brings. I, 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 I can do all things. Jesus gives me strength no matter what life brings. I can do all things. I, 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 I can do all things. Cause Jesus gives me strength no matter what life brings. I can do all things. Now instead of echoing on this part, you say, whatever, whatever. Okay, two times. Here we go. If I have a little, whatever, whatever, or if I have a lot, whatever, whatever, I can be happy, whatever, whatever, with whatever I got, whatever, whatever, whenever I'm in trouble, and I can see no end, whatever, whatever, God can see my trouble, whatever, whatever, and he wants to be
be my friend, whatever, whatever. I can do all things, cause Jesus gives me strength. No matter what life brings, I can do all things. I, 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 I can do all things, cause Jesus gives me strength. No matter what life brings, I can do all things. Have a great day, CLS. Hi friends, happy Chapel Day. Love Wednesday, love being with you on Wednesdays. What a great day we've had with our chapel message from Pastor Jim from St. Paul's Lutheran Church and School in Pacific Beach. Thank you, Pastor Jim, for sharing that great message with us. We'll talk more about that in a second. Also wanna say thank you to Pastor Travis and to Mr. Howard, and especially to our very own Maddie Ruggles for leading us in worship this morning. So thank you, everyone. Wow, press on together. Do we learn our lessons taught to us in Philippians? Good question, right? I loved Pastor Jim's story all about both Sparky learning his lessons and about Pastor Jim learning his lessons. And that the greatest lesson in Philippians isn't actually teaching us to be humble and kind and gentle and all the things that we wanna learn from Philippians, but that God loves us, forgives us, showers us with his grace and mercy, even when we don't learn our lessons. That's the beauty of Advent. God came near. God is with us. Not because we deserve it. Not because we've learned our lessons. Not because we treat others as we should. But because God's love is so great for us. He became human. Jesus came to earth, was born in a simple stable so that he could be the perfect person at all the lessons. He's learned every lesson. He's been perfect at everything so that you, me, our friends and family who love and know Jesus can be with him someday in heaven. That is the best lesson. What a great start to our Advent season. So happy Advent. I hope that your Thanksgiving was wonderful. I'm so glad that we're all back at school together now. This Advent season is gonna look different than most Advent seasons do. Usually right now we would be very busy in this church, in the gym, all sorts of places, preparing for our Advent services. Now, because of COVID, we won't be able to have Advent services the way we're used to having them, but Mrs. Barquette is piecing together some clever ways for us to celebrate Advent, and so we're so thankful for that. And you're gonna be doing all sorts of things in your classrooms to celebrate Advent. We also want to be sure that your family can use our Advent devotional so the teachers and staff at Christ Lutheran Church put together this Advent Advent devotional. There's a devotion for every day of the week during Advent. We'd love for you to join us in our theme, God with us. And as a school, we're going to have some fun spirit days. So starting out, our first spirit day for Advent is going to be this Friday, uh, December 4th. It's going to be wear something red. So you'll need to wear your uniform bottoms, uniform shoes, but you can wear red shirts, hats, accessories, socks, okay? So uniform bottoms and shoes, and then red whatever else you can come up with. So Friday, December 4th, wear something red. Then Friday, December 11th, it's going to be wear something, you guessed it, green. All right, so on Friday, December, let me see, de December 11th, so not this Friday, the following Friday, wear something green, same thing, uniform bottoms and shoes, all right? Then on Thursday, December 17th, which is the day before we get out for Christmas break, it's gonna be go all out with your Christmas attire, right? So on that day, whatever Christmas colors, if you have fun special Christmas shirts, you can wear those, accessories, socks, all of that stuff. So all of our Christmas attire on Thursday, December 17th. Again, uniform bottoms and shoes. So 
three fun spirit days in the season of Advent as we get prepared for Jesus's coming. So lots of fun things there. All right, friends, have a great day. Jesus be with you. Ooh, I don't use this anymore. Hmm. Nolan, you can't put a used sweater in there. Ew, ew, what is that? My lucky tissue? No, no, ew, don't put that in there. Oh, where's the other one? Uh, it's on my other brother's foot. Oh. This is in English. Um, people in Mexico speak Spanish. Okay, now this is good. But I was gonna keep that. These kids need it more than you. Don't put used items in here. Also, don't put melted chocolate, English books. Put stuff that you would want to receive. Oh, work your kids. Bye, Mom. Don't forget your boxes. Okay. Bye, Mom. Bye, kids. Please put your box on the table. Thank you. Where do you want me to put this? You can put the boxes on the table. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Where are these boxes going to? They are going to Mexico. Where are they going to? Oh, they're for the kids who don't have presents this year. So nice. And generous, too. Where will we put these? They will go to school. Have a nice day. Remember to put the $3 in your Project Joy boxes so they can get down to kids in Mexico. Hola, Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad! Dios mio, gracias! Dios mio! Gracias! As you can see, it is very important to label your boxes correctly and put things that people would actually like inside of them. It's also important not to carelessly wrap your package and let it rip. Some things that people tend to like in their packages are hygiene products, art supplies, socks, and things that they can use. If you have any questions, contact Mrs. Seitz. The boxes are due Friday, December 11th. Thank you for participating in Project Joy.